Marvel's next Disney Plus show, Loki Season 2, drops in just a couple of days. Yeah! And the first official reviews are out there, and man, they're a lot better than I expected. I think at this point, almost every Marvel fan gets a little bit worried about MCU content, especially if it's on Disney Plus. And it appears like Loki Season 2 kind of breaks that mold, although to be fair, not everybody is as taken with it as some. And so in this video, I want to dive deep into the early reviews for Loki season two and kind of make sense of what to expect for the show. But I also want to say we're in sort of a weird spot when it comes to Marvel Studios. It used to be the case that Marvel would get a lot of glowing reviews and that a lot of reviewers would come out of watching a premiere or getting their screeners and be incredibly positive about the show or movie. And while I do think there's some of that still out there, there's also this weird other way that a lot of critics are going, where I see a lot of critics being way more critical and less nice to Marvel Studios productions in general. And so now more than ever, it's important to not just look at whether or not a person gives Loki a positive or a negative score, but to really look at what they're saying about the show. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these reviews. Currently right now, Loki season two is sitting at an 82% on Rotten Tomatoes with 45 reviews in. That's a pretty good score. And from here, there's probably going to be like a hundred and 50 more reviewers at least so you're going to see the score change it could go up it could go down but given the trajectory that i see in these reviews i think it's probably going to go up so let's start here with john roca who says loki season two is some of the best of marvel tv yet building upon the quality of season one it's a moving expansive exciting intelligent and satisfying show that adds new and intriguing layers to the loki universe with some of the great new characters and settings High praise coming from John Roca. That's good to see. And then let's do a negative one. Let's talk about what Lewis Chilton said. More than anything, Loki has started to resemble what it truly is, an ill-advised spin-off in the old tradition. A too bright spotlight for a side character who is never best suited to lead. A dinner comprising only hors d'oeuvres. I think it's hors d'oeuvres. I think that's what he said. And I just got to tell you, I think that's crazy. I think that's super wild. Like, I haven't heard anybody in, like, all of my years of covering the MCU. I've literally never heard anybody, even some of the most stout haters of Marvel, say that Tom Hiddleston is a pointless side character that shouldn't be a lead. Wow, wow, we was this a bitter ass person, but it's fine. I guess they're entitled to their opinion. Here's another positive one here by Nate Adams. It says raises the stakes and the confusion, and that's cool. Gives it a B minus. That's a good score. And this is something that I think we're going to see repeated throughout a lot of the reviews is how confusing and highbrow some of the stuff in Loki season two is. Here's a negative one from Nick Shager. And my God, this dude got the thesaurus out for this freaking review. It's convolutions overwhelming. It's charming personalities and free-willing spirit of paradox-laden adventure. It's another indication that the Once Mighty franchise has lost its direction. And you'd really have to use like a computer or something and a breakdown of what he's saying here, but he feels like it's over bloated and it's kind of overwhelming because of its personality. Sorry, Nick, but you kind of sound like a hater. Low key, bro. Here's a positive review from Jazane Sophia. It says, the God of Mischief is back. And while Marvel's multiverse is still somewhat of a mess, the performances in Loki season two are phenomenal. And she gave it an A. Again, sort of speaking to the confusion, talking about how the multiverse is still a mess. That's interesting. We're going to hear a lot of that. But she thinks the performances carry gives it an A. Let's read another negative one here. And this one might surprise you. It says, as flat as the rest of the season can frequently be the big problem is jonathan majors who returns as yet another kang variant and you might be surprised by that but i've actually seen a lot of people mentioning this that the take that jonathan majors did for the victor timely character is just maybe a little too wild like even worse than he who remains from loki season one and a lot of people are just not down with it but again we'll talk more about that in a little bit it's something that dan merle mentioned in his breakdown as well let's read this positive one here from grace randolph she's said even better than season one marvel delivers their best storytelling since 
end game. Wow, that's high praise. Thrilling, epic, dark, and also still funny, this new season makes Loki one of the best MCU characters. Quan is a fantastic addition while Wilson continues to deliver. And I watched Grace's video breaking down the first four episodes of Loki, and she's just ecstatic about the show. She absolutely loves it and thinks it's one of the best things Marvel has ever done, and that's cool. Here's a negative one from Jared Jones from IGN, and IGN is kind of branding themselves as haters these days. It's kind of interesting, but here's what he says. Tom Hiddleston's Loki is back for more multiversal shenanigans, but the absence of director Kate Huron seems to have sapped the willy fun from his Disney Plus spinoff. And he gave it a 5 out of 10, and this is something we're going to talk about in a second here, but a lot of people that are not liking the show are saying it's a little less fun, it's a little bit more serious, and it's a little bit more explainy. So IGN really didn't like that. And I'll read one more positive tomato here from Josh Wilding of comicbookmovie.com says, a masterclass in imaginative storytelling, Loki season 2 is the MCU at its best and a riveting new chapter in the multiverse saga. It's mind-bending, monumental, and utterly marvelous. And as a bonus, Ki Hu Kwan is a scene stealing delight. And he gave it a five out of five. I mean, that's really high praise. Super cool. He loves the show, saying that it's a masterclass of storytelling while also cracking open the multiverse and driving that story forward as well. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And now I want to talk about two reviews that are up on YouTube right now from, I guess, my colleagues or fellow YouTubers. The first one is Grace Randolph. Now, I did mention her actual review for Rotten Tomatoes and she's really, really positive on the show. But she said a couple of things in her review that I thought were really important to note. Number one, she said that there's stuff that happens every single episode. And so this is going to be a show where things actually happen. There's going to be discussion in the fandom around each episode. And I think that's particularly important to a show's success when it comes to Marvel and Star Wars. I think when Ahsoka's really hitting, it's hitting because it's causing conversations, causing fans to speculate and have theories and really in engage in the content and when it's missing it's because nothing's really happening and i think a lot of marvel disney plus shows suffer from this as well there are sometimes multiple weeks where nothing of note really happens and then especially in the later parts of a season the shows tend to just really flounder grace also mentioned that loki gets to be loki and be a little bit darker and be the god of mischief which i think is really cool and she speaks to this incredible twist at the end of episode four which actually caused her to gasp and i think that's really cool and again i don't always line up with the way grace sees things but i just wanted to mention this because she absolutely loves loki season two spoke very highly of it and said some interesting things like the idea of Loki being dark, super cool. The idea of stuff happening each and every episode, really cool. Grace says that she didn't really notice any of the changes that happened behind the scenes because Loki did change a lot. Kate Huron didn't come back. Michael Waldron didn't run the show. He didn't really write this season at all. And it's apparently a pair of directors that takes most of the episodes. But according to her, they absolutely killed it. They knew the assignment and Loki is just as good, if not better in season two, than it was in season one. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, you have somebody like Dan Merle, and I watched his video review as well. Respect Dan Merle a lot. Great numbers guy, also has a critical eye. He's been in the space for a long, long time. And Dan wasn't as taken about Loki season two at all. And I think Dan's criticisms are important to bring up. He definitely didn't love Jonathan Major's performance in Loki season two from what he saw in the first four episodes. And in fact, Dan went as far as to say that if audiences feel the same way he did, it might be time to revert, to make a different decision and not have Kang be the big bad of everything and maybe not even the big bad of Secret Wars. And while that is crazy to hear, it's something I found repeated in a lot of the other reviews. A lot of people feel that way. Folks are not loving the Victor Timely character that Majors turned in, and that's kind of wild, so just something you might want to keep an eye on. Dan also said it was just really confusing and very very exposition heavy. They've even sucked out some of the fun. That's repeated in some other people's takes as well, but that is definitely the side that Dan fell upon. And Dan also made it a point in his review to mention the fact that Marvel's been on really shaky ground and some people, including himself, were looking for Loki season two to completely right all of those wrongs and turn the entire Marvel machine around. And I think his main point in his video is that Loki season two doesn't do that for him. It's not that show. It's not turning him back into a believer. It's not restoring his faith. And I get a sense, although I don't exactly remember from Dan's videos, but I get a sense that he's not even that fond of the whole multiversal saga and this idea of the multiverse. And so Dan might not love what they're doing with the multiverse 
in Loki season two because he's grown tired of that concept and really wants to just focus on more character stuff. But okay, so let's try to like put a bow on this thing. Let's try to summarize what's going on. Well, I will say the vast majority of people are very positive about Loki season two. I think that's pretty obvious, but there's also a large group of people that don't like it and perhaps even larger a group that is on the fence about the show after four episodes. And they're saying that the show is seemingly darker and more explanatory. And I think it might divide fans depending on how they feel about the multiverse in general. Like, if you're a huge fan of the multiverse saga, you're very excited for Secret Wars, you want Deadpool 3 to connect directly to Loki Season 2, and you're excited to see variants, then I get a feeling you're going to love Loki Season 2. And I think Loki Season 2 was written and created in a way to really push that side of the MCU forward. But if you hate that stuff, if you don't like the multiverse, you're sick of it already, I don't think Loki Season 2 is going to do anything for you. I don't think it's going to win you back over to be being excited about all this stuff. What's most important and what's going to be most interesting is how the normie fans end up feeling about this. Because I think there's a lot of normies that are like, okay, multiverse, that could be cool, but they aren't necessarily as bought in to how dope it could really be. I almost feel like Marvel put out four episodes specifically to garner as good of reviews as they possibly could to get as many people as possible to check Loki season two out. Because I think Feige knows how important this show is to really pushing the multiverse saga forward again i'm super curious how the fans that are kind of on the fence about all this stuff how are they going to feel about loki season two is it going to push them into loving the multiverse is it going to kind of push them into being sick of it i don't really know and it's apparently much darker less fun and also kind of heady like a lot of people on twitter were saying stuff like i'm not smart enough to understand this somebody please watch the show and explain it to me even a lot of the positive reviews i went over people still confused about the multiversal saga and confused as to what even happens in some of these episodes of loki and just like everything else i think it's going to be up to the audience to decide how they feel about it is it too heady is it too highbrow is it too confusing for people to grasp or is it going to have that perfect level of intrigue that pushes discussions online and elevates the material and gets fans more excited for what's going to be coming with deadpool 3 in Secret Wars. We'll just have to see. So there you have it, folks. The first reviews out for Loki Season 2. Positive with an asterisk. A lot of people still not necessarily loving the show and kind of confused by it. So I'm excited. Reading all this stuff, watching other people's videos got me pretty hyped up and excited. I'm going to be doing a watch party Thursday night for Loki Episode 1 of Season 2. So come on by for that. And we'll be talking about Loki Season 2 in different videos and in different streams as well. As I always say, I hope you're having an awesome and a nerdy day. And I'll see you in the next video.